Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, the Deaf Knight, back with your weekly update on the Batman. Every week, same bat time, same bat channel, we do a big breakdown on all of the updates on the upcoming film, and this week there's a lot to unpack. The movie officially started its principal photography this week, and we've learned a lot from its cast list, including who the villains will be and more. Throughout this video, we're going to be breaking it all down and giving our thoughts on what it means. There may be some spoilers here, so if you don't want to know anything about the film, then I highly suggest that you turn off now. Without the way, I just want to give a huge thank you for clicking this video. Now let's get into our breakdown of the Batman 2021. Okay, so this week we've had no updates on the Batsuit or Batmobile. However, there has been a lot of fake news flying about in regards to the car from a number of different sources. The first one looked like a nice muscle car that was in line with the descriptions that we got on the vehicle. However, this is actually from Movie World Australia. So yeah, don't let the Joker clickbait you. The second that was floating around made it look like the car had jet engines attached to it. However, this was also from Warner Brothers Dubai. There's a ton of fake stuff floating about in regards to the movie and personally, I don't think that we'll see the Batmobile or Batsuit until Matt Reeves wants us to. Even the world's greatest detective will have trouble leaking it as these things are in high security vaults locked in the Batcave. So yeah, next time you think the Batmobile has been posted, just go in with some skepticism because there's so much of this kind of thing popping up every day. Anyway, the week started off with Matt Reeves officially announcing that filming had begun. We did believe that it started in London a couple of weeks ago, but now we know that this was mainly for location scouting as well as the cast getting their costumes fitted. Occasionally they do photo shoots during this time, so things can be used in marketing, and this is probably what happened then. So yeah, Pattinson could still show up on a motorbike at some point, as well as the Gotham Action News vans and so on. The clapperboard states that the film will be shot in 2x39x1, which is widescreen to you and me, and that it will be 24 frames per second. This is standard across the board and it's a very, very bold choice for a movie. So yeah, this won't be like Gemini Man, which was shot at a headache inducing 120 frames per second. The logo itself actually reminds me a lot of the Batman Beyond one and I love the red lettering. Whether this is used as the final font for the film, we don't know yet as sometimes studios do use it and sometimes they don't. The logos often get revised, so though a lot of people are saying this is the way that the film will be marketed, I wouldn't take it to be just yet. Remember, remember what I told you about the Joker guys. An interesting thing you may notice from the image is that the clapperboard is against a leather bound chair and this will likely be one that Bruce sits and broods in. This could be a callback to the Cape Crusaders origin story in which the character sat before he was greeted by the bat that would inspire him to become the Batman. As we know, this is the first film in a new trilogy, so it does make sense that they would pull from the iconography of the first comic books. A chair like this also appeared in Batman Returns at the start of the movie when Bruce was sitting about staring into space, waiting for that moment that a notification pops up to tell him there's more Batman news. Pfft, well, they have a very sad life. Judging by the style of it and the context, it is likely that this piece of furniture will come directly from Wayne Manor. Personally, I love the look and I'm glad that they're going with this kind of aesthetic. Reeves also took to Twitter this morning to confirm which Batman villains would be appearing in the movie. It's been long thought that they would be the Riddler, Penguin and Catwoman and no matter how many times We Got This Covered tells you there's going to be 8 villains in it, the image that was posted today confirms that those are the ones we'll be getting. Though we haven't seen their costumes yet, this is a nice little callback to the 1966 version of The Dark Knight. Backing this up is also an official cast list that outlines who everyone will be playing and once more it lists these three. There were rumours and a lot of articles published recently that said Harvey Dent would be in the film and that this could tease Two-Face but going off this official cast list from Warner Brothers, it doesn't look like he'll be in the movie. These cast lists can always be amended so don't count the character out just yet but they may be saving him for a sequel similar to how The Dark Knight did. What it does confirm though is that Andy Serkis will indeed be playing Bruce Wayne's butler, the infamous Alfred. Serkis has long been thought of as playing the part and he's had a very close relationship with Matt Reeves since they worked together on the Planet of the Apes trilogy. This is great news and I'm so glad that we finally got someone who I think is a pretty underrated actor playing the Dark Knight's number two. Not that kind of number two, he's not Guano Man, hey? You having that Bat fans? That's a that's a callback to uh, no, never mind. 
Circus is known predominantly for his motion capture work, but I think he will do really well in the role and I can't wait to see him picking up glasses after Bruce Wayne in the movie. In addition to this, we now know that Peter Sarsgaard will be playing Gotham District Attorney Gil Coulson. So Harvey Dent is not the DA of Gotham and he may end up being elected at some point in this movie or the next, depending on if he's added to the cast list or not. Now, you may have noticed from the cast list that there's quite a lot of policemen and members of the law being added to the lineup and this actually could paint out the state that Gotham is in. Before Batman Year One, Gotham was always thought of as a great place that, though it had crime, wasn't the cesspool that we now know. Frank Miller completely reinvented this and in an interview he stated that he never understood why Batman was needed when Gotham was so good. So in his seminal graphic novel Year One, he completely flipped Gotham on its head and made it a centre for corruption and deceit and thus this underworld required someone to step in and be the Batman in order to stop it. This aesthetic has remained ever since and I definitely think with all the law enforcement officers that have been cast in the film that we'll be seeing something similar here. I love watching the corrupt side of Gotham and my favourite time in Batman comics was when the Cape Crusader was fighting the police just as much as he was the criminals. Hopefully they go ahead with it as I'd absolutely love to see that in the movie and it always makes for an interesting way to portray the character. We also have some tidbits on how the characters from the cast list could end up looking which I'll get into in just a bit. Before we get into the rest of the video though, I just want to let you know we're giving away a free copy of Doctor Sleep to one random subscriber. All you have to do to be on with a chance of winning is like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave your thoughts on the updates in the comment section below. The winner is going to be chosen at random on the 15th of February and the set will be shipped out from then to whoever gets the prize, so best of luck to everyone who takes part. Okay, so we have some news in regards to who will be doing the makeup on the project, that is Naomi Don. Not only did she work on Skyfall, but she also recently did the makeup for Overlord, so as the tweet on screen rightly says, if they do end up using Two-Face then the character is in good hands. This also brings up the prospect of Penguin's nose. There's been a lot of back and forth over whether Farrell would end up donning a prosthetic or not, however with Don on the project, it seems likely that it'll be Don in one. Eh? Don always pushes the boat out as much as possible and if we were to hazard a guess we would say that the character will indeed be appearing with one that would make Pinocchio jealous. It's the type of nose your grandad would grab and say, I've got your nose and you'd go grandad keep it. The last story in regard to the film is about Robert Pattinson's comments that he made last year in which he said Batman wasn't a superhero. Naturally most people didn't really care but this sent some corners of the internet into an angered frenzy. The actor got a lot of backlash for it at the time and yeah people were like this guy shouldn't be Batman go back to Twilight. Pattinson has since come out this morning and retracted what he said and when discussing whether the character was a superhero or not he stated the following. I wasn't educated about the subject. People got very angry about it. It's bizarre. I still can't understand the argument. Okay, he's a superhero. I'm sorry. The next headline, Pattinson retracts. Batman is, in fact, a superhero. He takes it back. You bloody bet you that'll be the next headline, Pattinson. I'll never let you forget this. Never. Anyway, that's all of the news. It's pretty good that we now have a full cast list and some ideas on how the characters could look. Everything is falling together and though I do think the announcements over the next couple of weeks will be official ones instead of set leaks, there's still a lot to look forward to. Thanks for checking the video out and I'll see you next week, same bat time, same bat channel or whenever I feel like doing a video. Now obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on the updates and if you're excited for the film. Comment below and let me know and if you enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up and if you missed last week's entry then make sure you check it out after this. We go over the Batsuit and Batmobile descriptions and talk Colin Farrell's Penguin so it's definitely worth checking out if you want to know more. If you want to support the channel from as little as 99 cents a month then please click the join button below. You get access to content early and can also suggest video topics and breakdowns. We massively appreciate it and it goes a long way to helping videos like this get made. If you want to come chat to us after the show either follow us at DefinitionYT or click the discord link in the description below. Those are the best ways to keep up to date with heavy spoilers, so hopefully we see you over there very soon. This is a channel for people who are super into superheroes, so if that's the kind of thing you like, hit subscribe. Thank you for taking the time to watch this, I've been Definition, you've been the best and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.